Hello and welcome to my Amiga Early Hard Drive Controller video series. I will make two other videos on the cards mentioned here, showing how I performed repairs and installation. But first, this introduction to the Commodore A2090A and A2091. With the release of the Amiga A2000, Commodore needed to offer an interface card that would add hard drive capability to its flagship computer. The first of these cards was called the A2090. It offered the ability to add up to two ST506 or MFM drives and seven SCSI drives to the Amiga. However, this card did not have auto boot capability. For those of you who are not familiar, it would not boot the computer straight to the hard drive. In early personal computers, auto boot was not the ubiquitous feature we know today. Some computers booted off floppy disks in order to load drivers before the hard drive could be seen. But the speed and convenience of booting straight to the hard drive could not be ignored. The solution for this was to put the drivers on the controller card itself. And that's what Commodore did with the A2090A. The A2090A had auto boot ROM chips for both the ST506 and SCSI disks installed directly on the board. The software installed on these ROM chips was custom, non-standard, and a little buggy. The ROMs also had a hard drive size limit of 256 megabytes. The controller put the ST506 drives first so they get mounted as DH0 and DH1, which means the first SCSI drive is always going to be mounted as DH2, at least when booting from the install disks. Oddly, the first two cylinders of each hard drive are reserved by the controller and show up in the mount list as res x, where x is the drive number. So for example, the first SCSI drive is going to have res 2 mounted. Setting up the hard drive required using the custom A2090 install disks, which contained a program called prep. Commodore kindly included a batch program called install on the install disk to help you set up the first hard drive. This program was very limited compared to the Workbench HD toolbox and only set up the first drive and only one partition. If you had more drives, you would have to manually add them to the mount list, then manually reissue the prep command. Rob Turbo has a guide to that on the EAB forums. Commodore then released the A2091 controller, which dealt with a lot of the issues present in the 2090. The ancient ST506 interface was ditched in favor of a slightly less ancient 8-bit IDE XT interface, not to be confused with the more common 16-bit IDE. However, in some weird 11th hour decision, Commodore didn't bother to solder the IDE connector onto the board. At any rate, its ROMs were much more compatible as they supported standard rigid disk block and SCSI direct protocols, and it had sockets for up to 2 megabytes of fast RAM directly on the card. This card was much easier to set up using Workbench's HD Toolbox, which was first available on the A2091 install disk. HD Toolbox became the ubiquitous hard drive setup utility for Workbench, offering automatic reading of the disk geometry and a partition tool. That's it for this video. Just a quick intro to the first few Commodore hard drive controllers for the A2000. I have an A2090A and an A2091 in my possession, both of which were not functioning when I received them. The next video will feature the repair and installation of the A2090A. And the third video will feature the repair and installation of the A2091. I will be using a SCSI to SD hard drive emulator in both applications. Thank you for watching and be sure to subscribe so you don't miss my next videos.